Hi folks, Keith here for another quick video and I think um, what I'm going to do here is going to be it's a semi hydroponic update now if my mind is serving me well I would say I did this about 10 months ago and what I did I had similar plants of similar stages um, and potted them up so let's start in the back middle I had two Mazdavalia Dennis Rosinger I had a little seedling Cattleya Warner Eye, uh, a Mazda Valley, I can't see what that is, Vitalia or something, a Frag, Sorcerer's Apprentice, and a Cymbidium Keith Andrews, and a Cymbidium Keith Andrews. One was in Small Bark, Orchid Supplies UK Small Bark Mix with, with um, our Perlite, I use that for my Mazda Valleys. Uh, that's my Mazzy Mix at the moment. And same again. Mazda Valley mix, that small bark and about 10-15% of our P35 perlite and these clay pebbles, hydroponic clay pebbles that we sell which I thought really fit the bill but anyway, so what I'm going to do is just give you a quick update and uh, what can I say about semi hydro? I don't want to say it's been a failure or anything like that because anybody that knows me, I also always mention culture. Now, early on in looking into semi hydro, I did pick up that um, you can get this cooling effect, evaporative cooling. So, obviously, this water is going to be cooler than possibly the air temp. Well, it is, well, we'll be cooling the air temp, so you're going to get this evaporative effect throughout the pot. Now, you probably only get a problem if you've got warmer growing plants like Phalaenopsis. Some people recommend to put them on a heat mat in winter. Now, it probably wasn't the ideal time that I repotted these last year, but it's nothing that I don't normally do with my bark mix. But obviously, this was semi hydro. Now, I did repot, I did divide these. This was a massive Keith Andrews in bark, so I divided it. And there was some slight um, root growth, I think, if I remember right. So let's just take a closer look at these and see what. I'm going to go straight for this Sorcerer's Apprentice. And if I'm honest with you, I thought that that would be absolutely ideal for this culture because I've just gave that water whenever I've felt like it, just keep giving it water because they can literally sit in water but I've come to it today and I thought I'll give it a good route round, I've, I've gone through a good route through all the pots today, just have a quick look to see what, where we're at with it all so I've sort of got an head start so I'm not messing about too much in the video, but if you look, look at this there was two leaves in there, and I've pulled them off so I mean 10 months It's just a soft mush. One glimmer of hope there. So I don't, I don't quite know what I'm going to do with that. Now, on that one, what, what are the reasons? I'm not sure. Was I growing too cool over winter? Yes, I probably was because I grow about that was in my 10 degrees C end. Um, but I thought you know keep it ticking over for a few months hit into spring uh, I, I had on the side of caution with the water at first I must admit I just sort of sprayed around the top because I was trying to coax roots and then I thought into spring as soon as that warmer weather comes it would just kick into some sort of action and I would and I was hoping to see just roots coming down this side of the pot and it's not so I'm a bit disappointed with that one seedling been a bit slow but there is a just slightly growing around there look around the clay pebble so that's a bit more of a success if you want um, this one not looking too great the leaves are looking a bit pasty um, and I was giving them a wobble test look that's a bit of a worry for the fact 
10 months worth. I thought Mazavales would do uh, well in this actually because I thought I could keep them well watered. That's not too great for me actually. I'm pretty sure that with my Mazavali and mix I'd have done better there. I'll chuck that to one side. Now the Keith Andrews, there's not a terrible amount of root growth in either, but the plants are doing really well. See that? Doing really well actually. So you, you've got to hope that if they're growing well, what's in the pot? Hopefully you'd have roots. Now I've had a good root in this one, and again, to try and find some evidence of root growth, and I've found some brown roots in there which is and like the burnt but they're not they're not burnt or anything like that it's just that I think the probably the old root ball and I didn't cut them all away because I was a bit worried about that there's no evidence of root growth in there despite me having a good dig but the plants looking well but then again is that always a good sign because you look at that those growths came and I thought brilliant Look at these new growths, I've had an explosion of growths, I cut all the old leaves off. We're going to have an explosion of roots to follow. So I don't know with that one, I might pot it in bark next. So back onto the Keith Andrews on this one. I have a little dig in here, look. And I found evidence of a really good root just starting to get into there. So I'm hopeful with that. Now let's move on to these two identical plants. Dennis Rosinger. Again, that was like that growing relatively well, I was happy with that, no sign of any you know fantastic root growth or anything popping out and it again it's got that again so what do I do with this? Some root growth come in there look but not nothing to shout about is it? And again I thought Mazda Valleys would really really kick off into this because they like a bit of moisture don't they so I thought well, it would be ideal and this Dennis Rosinger with my mix. Um, this is what I normally pot in. So let's can't grumble with that, can you? So you know, um, box the winner there for me on that one. And I got those at identical times. I've got the two plants at the same time. Uh, I can't remember if I potted that at the same time, but I've had them at the same time. So it would have been both pretty equal. So whether that's had a setback, I can't quite remember. I'll have to look back in my video, I suppose, and have a look back. So that's the results of them. And it's not really conclusive, I suppose, but one thing I will say, I probably wouldn't jump into hydro. If I had have done, I may have hit quite a bit of trouble. And this is a tip for you here. This is where a lot of people and good growers sometimes really fail and fail really badly. Because what they do, they see a new product and they jump straight of it, straight into it. I'll give you a good example of that. Orki Auto when it hit the UK. People going absolutely crazy over it, they're using the bark on its own. Quite a, well, a couple of people who I knew, or know, jumping straight into the Orchiata with the Mazda Valleys, and they found it was too dry. And the plant suffered, and then they went back into the original mix, with Orchiata as the chosen bark, but the mix in the quantities they're using before, with foam, perlite, and you, you name it, you know. So, and, so that's the difficulty here so if you're going to take anything away from this I would say try some plants first don't jump straight into it now I've had some bad reports uh, I was at a show last week talking to an orchid grower and he was saying about Ceramis after a year or two or something like that a couple of years there's been a report out there that it starts leaching I don't know what, I've not seen it, but I'm going to look into that and report back on that if I find any information out. If anyone's got any information on that, please post below. Um, but going back to these, I will leave that in there. I'm obviously going to leave it in the bark. I'll leave that Cattleya, that I've not got a clue what I'm going to do. That Mazivale is actually going to go back into my bark. And I'm tempted to put that back into my bark. 
and progress on now you know, what that will do if I put it back into bark and see so I've got a bit of a struggle on there now because the roots aren't great now they say with semi-hydro you need the start of roots to be before you put in because those new roots will adapt to that medium but I wouldn't say that's specific to that because I like to keep find you know get new roots before I repot most of the time if you can because obviously it gives it a good start but sometimes you ain't got that privilege have you um, normally the best recovery media is probably nice fresh sphagnum moss I don't mean I don't use raw sphagnum moss picked off a garden or anything like that I use the dry pack stuff you can buy you know new stuff and use that that's probably the stuff just to wrap your roots and get going and just to finish the last few years there's been quite a, a bit of talk well not quite a bit but quite a lot of talk about water culture growing in water now obviously anything potted what it needs is air at the roots now obviously that hasn't got air but if you change that water frequently you're going to get airflow aren't you you're going to get air in the water oxygen if you leave it stagnant i'd probably say you're going to fail every time i thought i'd try this not a very good mazzy i've had potted quite I've divided a plant over there look got about 30 plants and this was an offshoot you could say it's not a very good example really is it to start life but there's a root growth there look a root can't focus on it coming so I'm going to come back with that with water culture and see all that now the one thing I hate about water culture straight away and it was the first thing that I picked up on when people was sort of I've never mentioned about this before on any social media or anything like that but the one thing I really hate about it is that water culture doesn't anchor the plant now the main reason for growing orchids in pots is to anchor the plant because most orchids will grow well on a bark mount if you can keep it watered enough most of us can't in the home it's a lot of hard work so we tend to pot them but that's all the media is doing apart from providing moisture and making it you know suited to your watering requirements but the main thing is to anchor your plants and that's one thing that that doesn't do and I thought and I attend orchid shows as well and I thought what will you do with an orchid when it's water culture it's difficult to stake your plants to, to stake your flowers and, and so for me I, d I just don't like the idea in fact I hate it if I'm honest with you that's my first personal opinion now obviously I've seen a lot of plants with good roots but I know for a fact if you put in a good medium fresh you'll get good roots in there which there I've proved and all you do is soak and allow to dry slightly between waterings. Obviously, some plants you can allow to dry more, like a Mazda Valia. I won't let it go too dry. But a Cattleya has got storage in those little pseudo, them little pseudo balls when they come. Gives you a bit of, you know, you can go dry a lot of drying between waterings. So you just adjust your watering. But so, and this is where where I'm going to end. Where do not jump onto something and say that that sort of all my problems out. There's no silver bullet with orchid growing at all. If you get the feed right, your watering right, and your minimum temperature and limit extremes, you will win with most medias, most techniques. So to end that, I hope you've enjoyed that update think it's 10 months on please like please subscribe please get involved please ask questions if you've got any questions anything that you think you want to ask me or anything you think i've missed or not covered then please ask and i'll respond okay thank you very much keep watching please subscribe if you haven't done already and thank you very much And goodbye. Anybody in the UK or anybody that's got Bank Holiday Monday tomorrow, Bank Holiday Monday, we've got a day off. I have. Have a finish a great weekend off. Enjoy your day if you've got an holiday tomorrow like me. Good evening. Goodbye.